Okay, so hey guys, my name is Quinston and in this video, I want to talk about or more like I want to create an application that can help us view 360 images inside of a viewport. Now, the technologies that we are going to use to create this application is electron.js, 3.js and materialize. So before we go any further, I want to show a demo of the application that we're going to create. So the first thing is uh, this is the application that we're going to create over here. Everything the same, uh, you know, UI, the same, everything, everything, drag and drop functionality, selecting functionality, and also it has a single instance trigger. So right click, open with single instance trigger. So you don't open multiple instances. So this is the application that we're going to create. There's a link to the PDF in the description where you can get the entire in-depth explanation PDF of everything, all the components that work. So the first thing that we're going to use is electron.js. Now electron.js is one of my favorite, uh, you know, platforms for building desktop apps because it helps you use uh, CSS, JavaScript, and HTML to build desktop applications. I know I don't know if they're native applications per se. It's basically building, you know, cross-platform -pla applications. Uh, you know, so the application that we are building also is works both on Macintosh and Windows. Uh, we're we're going to be using Windows in in this case, but I'll also show you a demo of how to make Mac specific changes in the application and this, and Windows specific changes. Also the next library that we're gonna use is 3.js. Now 3.js is one of those libraries where, you know, you can just build whatever you want, literally whatever you want. And I love 3.js because it abstracts the WebGL core, you know, the, the, the in-depth WebGL functionality for us so that we can focus on building our application and not have to deal with all the core WebGL stuff. And I like that and I enjoy that. Also you have Materialize, now Materialize you know, it's a library that helps you create material UIs with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The library gives you access to, you know, material components that you can directly use out of the box and uh, you don't have to make any of them from scratch. They're, they're pretty awesome. Like, for example, if you have components, badges, and so on and so forth. Also, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code for this application. And yeah, the, the, so, so don't badger me for that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, one thing that I want to do is delete all the old applications that I have so that we can start new delete this. Yes. So I'm going to go to GitHub. I'm going to create a new repository uh, simply because I want to and I'm going to name this 360 image player and there's a description for it. I'll just leave the description initialize read me. No, I don't want to. It's going to be public create the repository. Then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to copy, I'm going to do, okay, not this, I'm going to do a command prompt and I'm going to write CD document. I'm going to go to my documents because that's where I stole all of my code. I'm going to do a git clone because I want to get that repository. So it says that you appear to have cloned an empty repository and that's exactly the way I want to play it. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do over here is we clone this repository and uh, so I hope you guys have installed node and Git because this is how you're going to use Git and node is you can really just go to the, the node website and install it from there. It's pretty simple. You can just watch a tutorial for that. I'm not going to make a tutorial for node now. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our package.json file inside of our project. So the project is over here. So where is my project? This is where it has downloaded. It's an empty repository with so it has Git already there. So I'm going to right click on it and open with code. Okay, it's open with code now. So it's an empty repository. So you don't basically have a lot. So we're going to do an npm init because I want to initialize my package.json file. Yes, I want to do package name is 360 version description is whatever. I don't care. Entry point. So entry point is something that I want to change at the moment because in electron, uh, in electron we don't use index.js as an entry point. We use main.js. So that's what's going to be there. Correct. Keyword, author, license. Yeah, this is pretty standard. So, so now we have our package.json file. Uh, the next thing is maybe we should just test everything out if it works. So I'm going to right click. Uh, so, so yeah, package.json file has everything that is supposed to be there. So it's not really that complicated at the moment. Uh, what we are going to do is create a main.js file. So we need to create a main.js file at the moment. So I'm going to create right click new file main.js and inside main.js I'm just going to write console.log 
Hello World. Hello, capital H. Hello World, question mark. And the way you run this project is if you have done any node things before, just node uh, main.js. And it just says, hello world. Isn't that cool? That's cool. But I don't like running this project like this. I, I don't like running any node projects like this because this basically states the fact that you are not, you know, if you give this code to somebody else, they'll be like, okay, how do I run this? And I have to tell them. Instead, we want to use NPM to run it. So I'm going to go to my package or JSON file and I'm going to create something. Um, I'm going to write another script. So, um, so scripts are basically what you can run from the command line with NPM. So I'm going to write, it's pretty evident what it does. Start. And in this, I'm going to write node main.js. That's what we just wrote over here, right? Yeah. So I'm going to write npm run start. And as you can see, it runs the file, but now it runs it from package.json, which is pretty awesome. So uh, what we're going to do next is uh, we talked about why we want the entry point to be main.js and package.json knows what the entry point is. So instead of using, um, you know, this main.js over here explicitly, we can just write dot node dot. And if we run this over here, as you can see, the same thing runs properly. It's uh, no issues at all. And it works out of the box. The next thing that we're going to do is uh, we are going to write something electron specific. So we're going to write some electron specific code in here. Const electron equal to uh, require an electron. But we haven't really installed electron. So we are going to do that. So npm install minus minus save dev uh, electron. Okay, uh, you know, in some cases you might get errors over here because Electron downloads a file onto your system and you have to give it permission. So sometimes you will need to run this code with sudo. Sometimes you will have to ha add a flag called hash um, dash dash unsafe perm equal to true. But yeah, that's just how it works. But it's it's not really a big deal. You can you can deal with it. Uh, one more thing that I want to do is right now, if you see, we have this node modules folder over here. Now, when I sync my Git repository with my GitHub repository um, online in the cloud, I don't want this folder to be going along with it because it's just, it's just annoying to wait for such a long time for all the... Rep and, and also one more thing is that you can just install all the all the dependencies by just, just writing npm install. So there's no point in doing that. So I'm just going... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click over here, create a new file and do a git ignore. So in git ignore, what git ignore does is basically whatever you fold, whatever files or folders you write in here are going to be ignored by git. So they're not going to be synced with the cloud repository. That's it. So we're going to write node underscore modules. Is the spelling correct? Yes. So now when I do a git save, so maybe we're going to do a git save in the future, not right now. But yeah, that's how we're going to do it. One more thing is that now we're going to write some git specific code. Let's just see if this runs right. npm run start. And as you can see, it does run, but it's not really very exciting. So let's just write some more electron code. So one more thing is that I don't want electron per se. I want something more from, from it. So what I want from here is I want app and uh, I want browser window. That's what I want. I don't want uh, electron itself. I want the browser window. So what I'm going to do is, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I did. App, right? App. Let's go to the documentation and see what app does for us. So electron docs, and let's see what app does for us. I'm going to use the documentation a lot because I don't want you guys. So we, we, we're going to use a, a function, a, a, an event called ready. So we're going to do control F ready and the event ready. So this event is basically emitted when electron is finished initializing. So let's do that. So we're going to write an app dot on ready. So when electron has finished initializing, we're going to run a function. And the function is basically going to do one thing. It's going to create a window for us. So we're going to do var win is equal to new browser window. And inside the browser window, we're going to have the width of the window, width of the window, which is going to be 1280 and the height of the window. So HEI GHT height, which is going to be 720. So width and height of the window. And one more thing is we need the window to show something. Right, we, we, we can just have a window 
that has an empty window. We need the window to show something. So we're going to do win.load URL. And inside the window, we're going to put index.html. Uh, .html. As you can see, we don't have a windows.html file. So we're going to create it. Index.html. And in that file, we're going to do very, very simple things in that file. So what we're going to do is we're just going to write, where, where is it? Index.html file. That's, that, that's it. That's all what we're going to write in it. And the title, I'm going to write um, 360 um, image play. Yeah, clear. That's it. So now when I run this, npm run start, it says error, 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 error. Cannot read on undefined. So the way we fix this is that uh, this doesn't know it's running electron, basically. So we're going to go here and instead of node, we're going we're gonna to write electron and now when we run this it runs just fine it runs just fine this is what our result is so now we have a desktop application open which is pretty pretty epic so the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to add everything that we need for this to work so we're going to add a, a git you know all, all of the material uh, dependencies that we need so first of all we're going to add materialize so to add materialize, we can go to the about page of materialize. Uh, I think getting started is where we go. And then they have these links over here. So we're going to copy these links and we're going to put them in our index file. So in the head, in the head, we're going to put them over here. But the thing is, I want these to be available offline. I, I, I want these to be available offline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder, CSS, a new folder, JS. And I'm going to go, so th this is a style sheet over here. This is a CSS style sheet. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to my thing over here, paste it in here. And then I'm going to basically copy all this code, copy it, come back over here, go to CSS, create a new file, call it materialize.min.css. And I'm going to paste everything in there, save it, close it and forget about it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dot slash CSS and uh, materialize dot min dot CSS. So now it is offline. The same thing is what we're going to do for this. I don't want the application to run online. I want the application to be completely offline, which is why we're doing this. So I'm going to control A, control C. I'm going to click on this part over here. I'm going to go to JS new materialize.min.js, enter, paste, save, close, save, and then I'm going to change this to dot slash js slash materialize.min.js. So now these are offline repositories. I don't need these, you know, these comments over here. So yeah, okay, there are two slashes over here. So one slash. Cool. This is what we needed and that's what we got. The next thing is uh, we need to have 3.js and the way we get 3.js is by going to a 3.js CDN. So 3.js CDN and which is the best CDN over there, cdnjs.com, 3.js, get it from here, one internet work. And uh, min, this is what we need. Copy this, I paste it over here. I get this file, I copy it. I, in the JS, I do new file, 3.min.js, and I paste it over here, and save it, and close. I'm gonna just, so, I'm just gonna change this to three. Okay, so let me just see if all the dependencies are there. Uh, so I'm gonna do an clear. So all, all of our offline dependencies are set up. So we're gonna do an npm run start, npm run start, so this doesn't really work for some reason, as I just realized. And the, the issue is that instead of load URL, we needed to use load file. And now if we run it, as you can see, it it works. Hello world shows up in big bold letters. And yeah, there is no error over here. See, but it does show a bunch of warnings, which you can ignore for now. It doesn't really, they, they don't really affect the, 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 the the effectiveness of this tutorial. One more thing that I want to show you guys is that the, the power of uh, materialize. So if you go to CSS or if you just search for button, 
If I click on button over here, I get these buttons like this one over here. I copy this and I paste it in anywhere in my index or HTML. If I paste it over here, and uh, if I play this npm run start, I basically get like a button which I can click and, and you can see the waves and stuff. Yeah, so that's all coming from materialize and it works out of the box. Pretty awesome, right? Pretty awesome. I like it, yes. I enjoy that, I really like it. So next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to, so now we want to create a viewport where we can put everything that 3.js gives us uh, at. So we need a location where 3.js can actually render the, the scenes and the spheres and whatever it has basically. So we are going to add that over here. So we're gonna do a div and the div is gonna have an ID which is equal to web gl viewer, v-i-e-w-e-r viewer. And it's gonna have a class full screen. So I'm gonna have a class full screen. And in the head, I'm going to add a style sheet, a, a style uh, rule, style. And in that style rule, I'm going to have dot full screen. This one over here. And uh, in that full screen uh, tag, I'm basically going to put a bunch of stuff uh, where I say uh, its position is absolute. So position is absolute, not relative, absolute. And then you have left uh, equal to zero. And uh, then you have right is equal to zero. Top is equal to zero. And bottom is equal to zero. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a dot a body tag, a body tag, where basically write margin zero and overflow is hidden. Uh, the reason we do this is because we want the margin to be zero. We want uh, it, it to be edge to edge. And the overflow is hidden because if it goes out of the screen, we don't want to show it not to be rendered at all. Uh, this is pretty obvious. Position is absolute, left, right, edge to edge. Everything is edge to edge. Cool. Um, now, if you actually run this, if I do this, background, uh, background color is equal to green. Let's say I do this and I run this. NPM run start. As you can see, you have a background that is green. That is pretty much true, but we don't want that. We wanted to render our scene, right? So for that, we're gonna write a bunch of code. So the code that we're gonna write is gonna be in our script tag. So I'm gonna write a script tag over here. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I, I don't wanna, I could just make a new file, but it makes, it is very personal when you write it over here. It's very per personal, like it just next to each other. It just feels like it's right. So I'm gonna write the code over here. And uh, it's gonna be very simple. The first thing I'm gonna write is var renderer is equal to new three dot web gl renderer. And yeah, so th this render is basically gonna initialize the web gl renderer that we have. Uh, the next line is renderer dot set pixel ratio. And in the pixel ratio, we're gonna write window dot device V I C E or D E V I C E device uh, pixel ratio. So it basically sets the device pixel ratio. Uh, this is usually for uh, high DPI devices to prevent blurring for the output canvas. You can check out more about this at the docs. I'm not intelligent enough to tell you what it exactly does, but yeah, that's what it does. Uh, then, then you have renderer dot set size, and in that you have window dot inner width um, and window dot inner height. So basically you're setting the size of the renderer to the full screen edge to edge. That's what you're doing. The renderer viewport has to be full screen edge to edge. Next, we're gonna do something very interesting. We're going to pull the WebGL viewer div and basically assign that as our main renderer. So we're gonna do document dot get element by ID and then we're going to have web gl viewer dot append child. That's how you do this in uh, in 3D uh, in HTML to append a child. And the child that we're going to append is obviously going to be the renderer dot dom element. So the renderer gives you access to something called a dom element, which you can attach to the web gl viewer. And that's basically how you set that up. 
Next, what we're going to set up is basically going to be the scene. So our scene is going to have a bunch of stuff. Scenes uh, are where you are allowed to set up what, uh, you know, you have cameras, you have objects, you have lights. We, we can initialize the scene and get a reference to it by simply writing var scene is equal to new three dot scene. So this will give us access to the scene stuff. Uh, second, we initialize the camera. Uh, so the camera is basically going to be a var camera is equal to new three dot perspective camera. And in the perspective camera, you have a bunch of items, 75. I'll explain what, what these are. Window dot inner width divided by window dot inner height. Then you have one and one thousand. Oh, I'm, I'm actually going to go a little higher than there. So I'm, I'm not going to explain it over here. Let's just go to the three dot js documentation and see what perspective cameras are doing. So you have three dot js documentation. I'm just going to write it over here. Perspective camera and the perspective camera. What is it does and how it's initialized. So it has the FOV. So the camera frustrum vertical field of view. Field of view is basically what how how wide the camera is and how wide uh, how edge to edge items you can basically see. Next you have the aspect ratio, and in our case the aspect ratio is very very straightforward. It's the height divided by the width of the window. That's the aspect ratio. The height divided by the width of the window. That's the, that's the aspect ratio. This is the near plane. This is the far plane. So anything closer then one unit is not rendered. Anything further than this, this value is not rendered. It's pretty straightforward, very simple. Next thing that we're gonna do is very interesting. We are going to set the position of the camera. So camera dot position dot set. So set the position of the camera to zero comma zero comma zero. So we are setting the position of the camera at the center of the entire world. So the world is zero centered at zero comma zero comma zero. So we are centering the entire camera at the center of the world. Next, we're going to make the camera point in a direction. So camera dot look at. So we're going to look at a point in space. So the point that we're going to make the camera look at is going to be ten comma zero comma zero. That is what we are going to make the camera look at. Next, now we have done everything. We have literally done everything, but we have not rendered anything. Okay, we have not told the renderer to take all these values and do something with it. So we're going to do that. So we're going to tell the renderer, hey, renderer, take these values and render them. So you're going to give him the scene, the scene values and the camera. So now, basically, what, what we're doing right now is telling the, the renderer that take this these this information and render it and where is it going to render it in the web.gl so now if we run this npm run start you're going to see a black screen because there is literally nothing there literally there is not nothing there okay so uh, right now what i also want to tell you guys is how you can actually toggle the dev tools if you see any errors so it says that it has webgl renderer 100 and there are also tools that you can use to actually de debug this. I'm not going to get into that because that's not this kind of video. So I'm, I'm not going in depth in this video that, that much. But yeah, you can even have like 3GS uh, Chrome extensions, which can have you have, you know, help you de debug stuff like this. Anyway, uh, to prove that this actually works, I'm going to do something else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add something in the scene. So what I'm going to add is I'm going to add a geometry. So I'm going to add bar geometry is equal to new three dot sphere buffer geometry so you can check out the documentation of what this exactly is you'll get everything 3 32 32 so 3 is basically going to be our uh, our radius and th this is the width segment the segments so how many segments is the sphere divided into so vertical segments and horizontal segments next you have our material which is equal to a uh, new three dot mesh basics material material and then you have a uh, mesh basics material and in that you have the color something like zero ff zero zero i think this is going to be something like green i think yeah so it's going to be green or something and then we have so so what we did over here is we created the geometry and we created the material 
So the geometry is going to be a sphere buffer geometry with a, a, a radius of three and 32 segments, 32 segments vertical and horizontal. And the material is going to be a mesh basics material. A mesh basics material is a material that I think does not react with light. It doesn't react with light. So it's going to be like always visible, even if there's no light in the scene. It's an unlit texture, basically, if you have ever worked, worked with Unity. And we have set the color of that texture to uh, this value over here. So this is a sphere. And we are going to do um, a position set. So we're going to do like create the sphere first. So in order to create the sphere, we are going to write var sphere is equal to new three dot mesh. So we're going to create a mesh from the geometry, geometry, and the material itself. Material. So that's what we do. We create the the, the actual geometry from. Uh, the actual sphere mesh from the geometry and the material and then we're going to set the sphere at a position so we're going to set the sphere at a position where we got the look at so a sphere dot position dot set and we're going to set it at this location over here so i'm going to copy this and put it here and that's the location then we're gonna so if you if you see we did all this right we did all, all of this to create the sphere but we haven't added the sphere to the scene. So that's what we're gonna do. And always remember, there have been times when I have like spent hours and hours just um, figuring out an error and I've realized the error was very simple. I just didn't add the, the object to the scene, simple. Sphere dot, uh, uh, sorry, not, not this, I'm gonna do scene dot add and sphere. So now I've added the sphere to the scene. Now if you run the project, we have an error. So why do we have an error? Let us check the error out. It says that mesh basics material is not a constructor, which means that mesh basic material, not basics material. Okay, let me see. Yes, now we have our spear over here and everything seems to be working the way we wanted it to work. So it's very simple to work with all this. Um, so in simple terms, we created a sphere. The geometry is a framework from which the sphere is made and so on and so forth. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to check out uh, something so here we use mesh basic material now what if you wanted to add light into the scene so let's just do an example where we add light into the scene so I'm gonna write var light is equal to new three dot point light and zero x ff 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 this is gonna be the color the light is gonna emit 210 where it's gonna start emitting from uh, and where it's gonna end emitting to uh, that's what it is. Then you're going to set light dot position dot set. We have zero comma zero comma zero. That is where everything is. Then we're going to add the scene, add the light to the scene. So add scene dot add and then the light. So the light is basically at the center of everything. And also one more thing that we need to do is we need to change. Uh, we need to clearly change the mesh buffer, a mesh made basic material to mesh Lambert. Lambert material. So I'm going to just clear this out and run this. And as you see, the light is now affecting, uh, as you can see, the edges over here, they're a little, um, you know, softened out. That is why that is because the light is affected. So light is at the center is looking directly towards the sphere. And that is why there's light. If you change this back to um, basic material, you can see that it becomes hard edge again. Uh, so yeah, that's that's basically how this is happening right now. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to take an image. So this is a sphere, right? So we can basically take an image and apply it as a texture on the sphere. So let's do that. So let's apply it. Uh, then let's uh, let's apply a texture on the sphere. Let's do it. So where we get a texture from? So I have a, I have a website called Farsight x.com where I basically, you know, we have this, um, this entire company that, that, that we run called Farsight X where we actually create, you know, 360 experiences for our clients. So I'm going to go to that website and I'm going to go to my Farsight demo over here, edit scene structure, and I'm going to download a 360 file. So, or, or we can just have a 360 file linked over there. So I'm going to go to edit preview content. I'm going to copy this. Oh, that was a pretty quick cop copy. I'm very proud of myself actually. And I'm going to put that somewhere over here. So I'm going to put that over here so that we can use that image in our future testing purposes. So yeah, cool. I'm going to just 
or I can just put it over here. It doesn't really matter. It's a string. Anyway, so next what we're going to do is we're going to use a texture loader. So let me just go and show you what a texture loader is on the documentation. Texture loader. Texture loader. So texture loader is basically something that you can use to load textures, obviously. So it's very simple. We're going to do so. We're going to actually just copy this over here. I'm not going to write all this code again. So copy this and paste it somewhere, uh, you know, somewhere before you initialize the light, actually. So I can just paste it over here after the scene. Um, yeah, this is the texture loader. It's, it's, it's actually pretty simple. I'm going to delete all the comments so I can explain exactly what it is. Once it becomes evident to you, you'll be like, oh God, this is so straightforward. Okay, I don't want this and I don't want this. I don't want any of these. We just need this too, for now at least. Uh, so I'm going to add some spaces. So what I like to do is add space between the objects and the lines so we can deal with them in a much better manner. So it basically, obviously, is it's a loader and it loads the texture. It loads the texture from here, from this line over here, and basically puts it in the map and creates a material from it. So that's what we're going to do. So instead of using this texture, I just have, I have this image over here. I'm just going to copy this and paste it in this location over here. This is a 360 image that I have pasted in this location. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my material create. So instead of, as you can see, we have the, the same thing, mesh basic material, like it's over here, but instead of mesh basic material, it's creating actually a, a map with a texture. So it's taking a texture instead of a color. So I'm going to delete this. And what, I, what I'm going to do is instead of creating that over here, I'm going to put that in the function itself. Now, why is this happening? Now, when you want to load a texture from the internet, for example, you first need to send a request to where the image is, download the image. And once the, download, the image is downloaded, then you want to apply it. So that's what I'm doing over here. I'm basically uh, sending a request to this location over here trying to download the image itself. And once I download the image, I want to create my sphere and I don't want to create before it. And I don't want this light being here. And I don't want it's that this is literally the code I want to run. So let's just run this code and see what happens. NPM run start. Yeah. So this didn't really work uh, because I think I didn't do something correctly. And the reason for that is very simple. And you will probably laugh at me because I was so stupid over there. I just had to render the scene again. So if I render the scene again, it will probably work. So if I do control J NPM run start rendering the scene again would actually work. And it says, and it does work pretty straightforward. Rendering the scene again did work. So why do we have to render the scene again? Because once you render the scene, something changed in the scene, the, the renderer needs to know that something has changed in the scene. And so you have to render the scene again with the same property. So that's why we wrote. So it first goes through the entire thing. So as you can see, it goes through the entire thing. Then it has a callback function over here, which will only be called once this image is loaded. But then by then this, this line over here has already been executed. So you need to execute that line again. That's it. That's how you render the scene. So the next thing that we're going to do is very simple and it's very simple. And you're, you're going to be like laughing at yourself because you'll be like, this is so straightforward. Instead of the, instead of setting the position of the sphere to 10, we're going to set the position of the sphere to zero. Okay. So let's check this out. NTM run start and nothing happens. We don't see anything. We literally don't see anything. So what we have to do is, so what are we doing right now? We are basically taking the sphere and putting it on the camera because the camera it has, it is at zero comma zero comma zero. So if we put the sphere to position and set it to zero comma zero comma zero, what is likely to happen is that we will be seeing the sphere. Okay. We will be seeing the sphere from inside, uh, from inside the sphere itself. So it's like a 360 sphere wrapping around us. You get the point? Yeah. So, in, but that is failing spectacularly because we don't see anything. And the reason for that is because the sphere, right? The sphere, if you can see over here, I'll show you something. So if you see in this file over here, the sphere has the texture from outside, which means that the normals are pointing outside. So we need to flip the normals. 
flipping the normals will invert the sphere and you will see the sphere from the inside. That's pretty much it. So what we do to that, do for that, that is we write uh, geometry.scale, write the geometry, geometry.scale, and instead of one, we have minus one, one, and one. So once we do this, the geometry inverts itself. As you can see, it's inverting itself. Uh, and if I set it to zero now, if I set it to zero now, yeah, see, it basically shows you the sphere from the inside, which is pretty crazy if you ask me. That's really, 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 really awesome. Done. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to save this entire file because we want to not lose it. Git add dot, git commit minus m, uh, sphere done. And then you have git push minus u, origin master so we're gonna sync our files basically and i'm gonna write my username and my password you can do this on your own too it's fine yeah so everything is synced online and now we can go ahead and start using something different so the next thing that we need to do is obviously we need to add the functionality of rotation so if you see over here <coughs> sorry if I click and drag, nothing really happens. We want it to rotate. So for that, we're gonna use something called orbit.js. So we're gonna to go to 3.js and we're gonna write orbit.js, orbit controls.js. So orbit controls are the tools that we're gonna use. If you scroll down at the bottom, you will find this a source over here and that's where orbit.js lives. You can click on raw and you will get a link to the whole thing. So copy this and you create an, in JS, in the JS folder, create uh, orbit controls.js, paste it, and you have everything that you need to work with orbit.js. So, but we haven't included it, so we import it in this file over here. So instead of doing it like regularly, I just write, orbit.js and it's imported now we can use it we can start using it inside our file so orbit.js gives us all the tools to help rotate the camera around a particular object and that's pretty cool so let's write the code for that to happen so we're going to go below the camera uh, set, after setting up the camera we're going to do all this because the camera is going to be our target so what we're going to do is we're going to write var controls equal to new three dot orbit controls camera comma renderer dot dom element so what's happening here so we are basically setting the target as camera so what the controls are going to be applied on the camera and the target is going to be something that we move around renderer dom element is basically where we will be receiving all of the inputs for uh, the mouse like the mouse input the drag and drop input all those inputs are going to be coming on this so this is the, the, the target which is gonna move, going to move, not move around, which is going to move itself. The camera is gonna move uh, and rotate. And the render is, render the DOM element is where we're gonna get the inputs, the mouse input, the keyboard input, all of those inputs for. Uh, the next line is very simple. Uh, we're gonna set the target. So controls.target.set. And we're gonna set the target as camera the position, camera position dot x plus 0 0.1 ca uh, comma camera dot position dot y comma camera dot position dot z so this is how we're going to set the controls one more thing that i want to do is instead of setting it, the sphere to 0 comma 0 i want to set it to uh, the position of so sphere dot position will be equal to camera dot position this makes more sense because let's say the camera is not placed at 0, 0,0, where, where, where are you going to place it? So that makes more sense. So I'm going to make this bigger a little bit. Yeah. So the controls target, the target around which the, the, the control will rotate, the camera will ro to rotate. So controls are applied on the camera. So the camera is what will, ro what will rotate and the target is what it will rotate around. And the target is set to a position of camera dot X uh, position dot plus one point point one plus point one. The reason for that is, I'll just show you once. I'll just run this once and show that it works. 
See if you run this. I have, I have an error, so let me see what the error is. It says render render is not defined at line number fifty two. So line number fifty two render is not defined. Okay, it's render error. Sorry. Yeah, now it'll work. Okay, so now if I rotate, it still doesn't work for some reason. Now why is it not working? Let me see. There's an error. No, there's not an error. Okay, there it's not working still though. Um, so the reason it's not working is because, as I said before, there is no way in which it will update itself, right? We have to tell the entire application to update. So the way we do that is by using an animate function. So what we do is we write animate. So the animate function is basically going to be a game loop which runs over and over again. If you have ever created a game, you know that there is something called a game loop, which runs over and over again to basically create that entire, um, you know, constantly running code. So we're gonna create a function called animate and call it. So function, also animate is gonna be a recursive function if you didn't know that already. Animate, and then you have uh, uh, something called a request animation frame and animate I'll, I'll explain this in a while uh, the reason is that so th so the request animation frame is what makes this recursive uh, the request and a uh, request animation frame is a javascript you know a core javascript item a function which basically asks the the, the browser that hey dude um i want to provide create an animation so once you are ready to create an animation let me create it and so that's what it does and once and to create an animation, it basically takes a function. So the, the animate function is what the function is. And inside the animate function, we're going to do two things. One thing is controls.update. I'll talk about controls.update later. We don't really need it at the moment, but we will need it in the future. So might as well keep it in there. Renderer.render. Scene, comma, camera. And this is a familiar function which you saw because we had to write it a couple of times. <laughs> so yeah, so the animate function is a recursive function which basically does all of this. And uh, yeah, that's that's that. Cool, that is that. So I'm gonna do control J, NPM run start. And if you see this now, it works. See, it's working, but it's, it's not desired results. I mean, it doesn't work the way you want it to, but non nonetheless, it, it works. Okay, it works. Now, the reason we had put the point of one over here and if I remove this, let's see what happens if I remove this, okay? If I remove this, it doesn't work. And the reason is because it needs a target to go around. Now I have a target that is, at a, so the camera needs a target to go around, if you know what I mean. If the target is at the same location of where the camera is, what will it go around? It can't go around itself, it's not possible. So we have a very minuscule amount of increment that it can go around, and that's what it is. Literally, that's literally what it is. So once you run the application, you can see that uh, it doesn't really rotate in the direction we want it to rotate. It rotates in the opposite direction. So if I drag like this, I want it to rotate correctly. I want it to be rotated in the opposite direction when I drag in the opposite direction. So to do that, we're gonna do something very simple and that is we're gonna change the rotation speed. So to change the rotation speed is very simple. We're gonna to go to controls dot, uh, and before that, I do wanna show you the documentation for orbit controls. We're going to change the rotation speed, rotate speed, rotate speed. Yeah, rotate. so this, this is what we're going to change the rotate speed. I think there are two of them. Yeah, the default is one, which is why it's going in that direction. We're going to make it minus one uh, initially. So let's make it controls dot rotate speed equal to minus one. So I'll just run this over here. And as you can see, it rotates in the correct direction, but it's too fast. It's too fast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change from it from minus one to 0 0.2. So 0 0.2 is a good value. What did I do? Yeah, okay, sorry. So 0 0.2 is a good value. And see this? Perfect, perfect. It runs perfect. It's not at all an issue at all. Cool. Uh, the next thing that I wanna do is uh, very simple. I, so when I click it, it, it stops abruptly. I want it to smoothly stop. So I'm gonna do something called damping. 
So the same you can find that in the documentation controls dot damping enable damping equal to true. So if I enable damping is equal to true, I also want to add some sensitivity to that, but I'll let do that later. I just do npm run start. And as you can see, there's a little bit of damping. It's not smooth, but it's not, you know, it's not bad either. So also I want to change the damping speed. Um, so the damping speed can be found somewhere around here. Enable damp, so I'm just going to do control F and damp. Uh, damping factor. So damping factor is probably something that you do. So damping factor. Where is that? Uh, damping factor. I'm, I'm, I'm going to change the, damp the damping factor to something like minus 0.1 or something like that. Let's, let's do that. So we're going to do controls dot damping factor is equal to minus 0.1 or 0.1 and yeah terminate this run the whole thing again oh this is too fast oh god okay minus 0 0.01 maybe okay this is like way way faster than i thought Shh, not even stopping so i'm going to do minus 0 0.02 or something like that. Let's try this. Or maybe just point 0.2 will do. Point 0.2 seems to be a good idea at this point. Yeah, point 0.2 is fine. I mean, I can live with this. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, cool. Maybe, maybe point 0.1 is also fine. Maybe point 0.4 is fine, I think. Point 0.5 doesn't sound bad either. <laughs> And I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just spending a lot of time on this. 0.5 is a little too stiff. 0.4. I like it to be perfect. You know, user experience is important. I, I like the application that I'm building to be perfect. Maybe 0.2 was, 0.3 was fine. This is what I do, you know. I, I spend so much time writing the application that I have to spend time doing this. Cool. I like this. I, I like this. Uh, it's, 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 it's fun. It's, it's fun, yeah. Maybe, maybe not use it at all. Maybe not use it at all. I don't know. Let's not use it at all. Maybe I'll reduce this to 0.1 because I think that would make a lot of sense. Yeah, actually that, that is perfect. This is actually very good. I like this. Cool. This is actually perfect. Um, I, I, I want to show you one more error that happens. So let's say I'm doing it like this now. Let's say I refresh. See what happens? It doesn't like resize itself. So we're going to fix that. So we're going to fix the resizing. Thing error. So we're going to add a piece of code at the bottom over here. We're going to add it at the bottom. So we're going to do window dot add event listener and resize comma on window resize. Uh, that's going to be our function call and then false. So the false is basically for event default. Um, so let's write that function function on window resize and in the function we're going to write camera dot aspect so we want to change the aspect ratio of the camera because the window size changes so yeah that has to change inner width divided by window dot inner height and then you have camera dot update projection uh, projection matrix so the update, the projection matrix is basically how the, the, the camera is set up internally. Then you have the render or reset. So set size of the render also. Renderer dot set size. Uh, and then you have the same thing. I'm just going to copy this over here. But the thing is, I'm not going to, uh, it needs to have a comma in between. Not, yeah. So this is the on size. So once you, you do this, everything makes sense. So control J npm run start now if you run this and you make it bigger and it becomes full screen yay everything works awesome uh the next thing is one thing is some sometimes uh, after you deploy the application you don't need this right you don't need the menu bar so we're gonna change that so we don't need the menu bar so we're gonna go to main.js and we're gonna destroy the menu bar so win dot set menu 
and we're gonna add a null over there. So if we do this and then run the, pro uh, the project, you can see that the menu bar is gone and you don't have anything over there. That's pretty cool. That's pretty, 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 pretty cool. Next, um, and now we're just getting into the whole making sure everything works fine and user experience part of the project where we will make sure everything works like the way we want to. The first thing that I want to do is I want to declare a var mesh over here. And the reason is that I want to be able to load new meshes when new images come in. I don't want to be stuck with one single image. Right now we are just dealing with one image. I want to be able to load new images when I have the opportunity. So I'm going to create a function and that function is going to be living over here and it's going to be called create mesh with material. It's going to take a texture path and that's about it. So it's going to take a texture path and it's going to be a create mesh with material. So we're going to just copy this entire thing from the loader to the end and we're going to place it inside here. Cool, got it, done, awesome. Everything is pretty much the same. That's that's all that, that there is. Uh, all, the only thing that's gonna change is that instead of var spear, I'm gonna write um, I, I'm gonna write something very simple. Mesh. <laughs> that is why I declared a global mesh because I wanted to write that over there. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Errors, I don't need that. Um, one more thing that we need to do is basically make sure that the mesh that we already have gets destroyed when we create a new one. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write if mesh is not equal to null. I mean, if mesh is not equal to null, initially it is. If mesh is not equal to null, scene dot remove mesh. So let's just test this out if it works. So copy this. Uh, one more thing is that uh, yeah, I, I obviously can't have this. I mean, you can't have this over here. So texture path can be something else. It could be, yeah. So let's just test this out, this whole thing out. And uh, let's see if it works. Um, I'm gonna put it over here. Control J, NPM run start. It didn't work. Uh, I think it didn't work because of the texture path not being known. Um, so let's just have that where the texture path goes. I'm going to do control X I'm going to do texture path. I'm going to do control V just to make sure I know where it is. Then I'm going to copy this part over here and put it at the top, copy this part and put it in here. Let's see if this works. Um, no, it doesn't. Now we need to see what the er er error actually is. So I'm so we set this to null. I don't want it to null. I want to check the developer tools. So view developer tools and see that sphere is not defined on line number 87. So line number 87, what is line number 87? Sphere of position. So here, wherever there's sphere, we need to change it to mesh. Cool, cool, cool. Yes, everything works just fine. Great. This is amazing. This is epic. Now the reason we did this is because we want to be able to create meshes on the fly. And if when you're creating a new mesh, if a mesh already exists, I want to delete it. That's it. That's the whole reason why we did this. So we're going to add some functionality and the functionality that we're going to add is the drag and drop of the image. So to add the drag and drop functionality, we are going to write some functions, obviously. So I'm going to write some functions in here. So I'm going to write document dot add event listener, and first event is going to be drag over, and it's going to have a function. It's going to be event, and uh, in the event I'm going to have a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's going to be event dot prevent default. Uh, this is a pretty standard JavaScript event where you prevent the browser from doing what it default it does by default, and then I'm going to say event dot data transfer dot drop effect is equal to copy now um so it controls the feedback so this controls the feedback the user is given during a drag and drop operation it'll affect which cursor is dis displayed and you know during the dragging for example when the user hovers over the target drop element the browser's cursor may indicate which type of operation will occur 
Awesome. Okay, cool. Next, I'm just going to copy this part and change the values. Pretty simple. So I'm going to add a drag enter, drag enter, set event to pre default. Then I'm going to say document.body.style.opacity is equal to 0 0.5. So the reason this is awesome is because now you can change the opacity of the document once the drag enter is done. I, I just want to like display this once. So I'll just do it once. So I'll just uh, do this. Show you guys. See what, what happens when I drag and it's not working. I mean, it does work. It, it became opacity, it became 50%, which is pretty epic if you ask me. Uh, the next I want to do is drag leave. Um, in the drag leave, I also want to put something else. Drag leave. Instead of enter, you do drag uh, leave. And the opacity comes back to one in drag leave. And the last one is uh, also very, very pretty awesome. And the last one is uh, the drop functionality. So once after the drag, you have the drop functionality. And in the drop, it's it's pretty epic. You just do event dot prevent default. Oh, sorry, that's already written. Uh, stupid me. And then you have uh, the create mesh element. So create mesh event dot data transfer dot files of zero dot path not texture path just path now i'll tell you why this is epic so for that i will do a console dot log uh, event because the event is coming from over here and after this happens i also want this to be set to style um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And let's see how if, if this works. I will do npm run start. And uh, let's say drag and drop. Yay, it works. Pretty epic, isn't it? So if we go to console right now, <coughs> you can see the event being plastered over here. And in the event, you have the data transfer and the files over here. So initially, when you have the files over here, uh, you have the path. So data transfer, files. Huh? That is confusing to me. It's supposed to, so the file is supposed to have all the items. Why doesn't it have all the items? Let me check one more time. Data transfer, file list zero. It's odd. Very odd. I'm not sure why this is not working. I, it does work, but I'm not sure why it's not printing out the correct event. Anyway, it, it works. So maybe it's I'm not printing out the correct event. The point is that you get access to the path from here. The path of which file is being dragged and dropped. Correct? Awesome. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are also going to... So we have the drag and drop functionality set up. Now we're going to do... Uh, so you, now we're going to set up the functionality for the file system. Selection, selection of the file itself. So the file is selected uh, by the dot by the button, right? So we're gonna write the button. So I'm gonna just copy the button from here. Copy this button, and I'm going to go to my index.html. Go to the top, and I'm going to basically go uh, below div, and I'm gonna write style is equal to uh, position. Uh, absolute absolute position sorry position is going to be absolute then you have left is equal to zero and top is equal to zero padding is 20 pixels and display is flex and then flex displays flex uh, flex direction Uh, I O N is row. Now, what is flex and what is flex direction? Those are flex box uh, values. I want to put something horizontally. If you don't know what flex box is, I'll have a link in the description to a page which explains flex box the best. It's a page by CSS Tricks. Check it out. It's pretty awesome. Next, I'm going to put the button in, and after the button, I'm going to put um, I'm going to put something very awesome. I want to show you div. So I'm going to have a div first, and that makes a lot of sense, I guess. And then below that div, I have a div uh, and a style which says style, oh, uh, sorry, margin 
left is 20 pixels and uh, it has 86 and then we say select a file or drop it here that is pretty awesome I'll do a yeah so if we run this right now if you run this application we see that we have a button and some text over here you can't see the text at the moment because it's not colored white so let me just add the color white and now when you run this application you will see this so once we select the button we are supposed to be able to uh, okay cool I'll just write a button instead of button, I'll write select file. So once you click on this button, you need to have an explorer open up and for you to be able to select a file to put into this entire, into this application here. So for doing that, we are going to have some uh, maneuvering to do. So we're gonna add something to this particular part over here. What we're gonna add is an input function. So we're gonna add an input. And in the input, that type is gonna be file obviously is going to be file and the ID for that is going to be equal to select file input style is going to be equal to display uh, equal to null display none sorry none and also I want to give an ID to the file itself ID equal to select file button and uh, I also want to add jQuery to, 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 to this entire thing because I want to add this functionality with the help of jQuery. So we're going to download some jQuery. So jQuery. jQuery is going to be over here. I'm going to add jQuery. And uh, where is it downloading from? Download jQuery 3.3. I, I don't want 3.3 actually. I want 2.2.1 or 2.2.4 will also be fine. jQuery 2.2.4. CDN. <clears throat> okay, we'll get from here. FOSS CDN 2.2.4. Copy this. Put it in here. Copy this. A new file jquery.min.js. Put it in here. Save it. End it. And uh, we're going to place it before everything jquery first i'm going to test if it runs pro properly okay it has this over here i'm going to display none over there so to test if jquery works i'm going to do a dollar sign dollar no man and it does say that it works but let's check it out once so jQuery is over here and we need to check if jQuery works. Um, the way we check it out is we want to write, also I want to make that disappear. I don't want the uh, file, choose file button to be there. And th that's because display none is not set to none. Okay, control J again. And test it out. Yeah, it's not there anymore. Cool, now we need to make sure that button works and shows us our file. Uh, so we're going to do something like this. We're going to write anywhere. You, you can write this anywhere. It doesn't matter. We're going to write uh, hash select file button dot click and a function is called which is dollar select file input dot click so you click on the file input and that basically shows everything up so you npm start and it doesn't work let me see what the error is it says that dollar is not defined which means that huh jquery is not defined so there's an error in, a, in, in electron that that happens um and that's pretty straightforward you have to add a bunch of script files along it so what you do is you add this code around as a wrapper on your imports. So what you do is you write script and inside it you write if type of module is equal to equal to object 
window.module is equal to module and module is equal to undefined okay that's your first wrapper and you also have to end the wrapper so the end wrapper is also over here you can check it out and it says if window dot module module is equal to window dot module module and now if you see it's freaky but everything will work the way it's supposed to work yeah but we don't have this working for some reason so let's just test it out once what happens okay it's not working well, let me see select file button okay hash is not selected cool let me try again and yes everything works and yeah so we just have to write one more line of one more particular line of code and this will every everything will basically work so you have dollar hash select hash select file input dot change function event and uh, over here there is create mesh with material so whenever there's a change in the input event dot target dot files again files zero dot path we get the path of the texture we send it and yeah that's basically how everything works so now if you npm run start it should work and yes it does everything just works amazing 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 everything is working uh, the next thing that we're going to focus on is actually packaging up our project so we're going to do an npm so we're going to use something called electron builder to package up the project electron builder so electron builder is very awesome and in in, in that sense it basically covers how you're going to build the entire project so yeah electron builder is a complete solution you can click on it and uh, yeah, it basically shows you everything that you need to do. Um, so let's let's do that. Let's let's do it. Um, but first, I would need to install Electron Builder. So npm install minus minus save dev Electron hyphen builder. So it installs everything. And I also want to show you the documentation for Electron Builder, which is at conveniently at Electron .build. And at this documentation, if you go to configuration files. You will see there's something called build so in the package of json file we have to write something called build and in that we have to define everything that we, that we needed to do which is something i'm just going to copy and paste in a while i'm, I'm not going to write all of that or maybe i will let's just write everything and show you exactly how it works so electron builder has been installed we are going to go to package.json file and add something called build and this is going to be our configuration system for the entire build uh, whatever so whatever we're going, to be, we're going to build at this point so here we're going to have app id and I'm, I'm, I'm going to call it something very simple com dot quinston dot 360 dot viewer so i've just created this particular um property in the package.json file and i hope everything is just working fine let me just run this once and npm run start to make sure everything works the way it's supposed to work yeah it does uh the next thing is that to build this particular project what we're going to do is very simple just write uh two files two uh, urls in the script section or uh, two commands in the script section we're going to write dist windows which is going to be build minus w and uh, the same thing will be converted from mac so for mac will be we'll write so instead of, I'll just write win. This will be Mac and M. So now let's do build minus, oh sorry, instead npm run test win. So distribution for Windows, everything is working, no issues at all. Now you might have some issues with Macintosh. 
building for the Mac, but for Windows, I think everything will work. The issues will arise for the Mac because we haven't defined the icons. Uh, in Windows, it just glazes over them. So now in the distribution folder, you can see there's a folder being created called dist. And in that folder, if you reveal in Explorer, you can find that uh, there is uh, this, this file which says exe, open it up, yes, install. And uh, it basically installs itself. Everything is set up. And after installation, it basically comes up. You can select it, open it, run it. It's very simple. It works and everything is just fine. So that's how you make this application. I've covered a bunch of other stuff in the PDF that I wrote. So in the PDF that, 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 that I wrote, I fix all the user experience issues. All of I also add keyboard support. Keyboard support. So in the PDF that I've linked in the description, you have keyboard support. I've also fixed like what happens is you have this option for right clicking, and and op op opening the app directly. That option has been added. Then you have a single instance. Right now, if you click on this and uh, click on it again, it opens up a new instance over and over again. So all of these issues that are, that arise and the detailed explanation has been provided in the PDF, which you can download and use uh, from the Gumroad link. So um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. This was kind of stressful to make. It's a very long video. Uh, so I, I hope you appreciate it and you learned a lot from this. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you want to support the channel, you know what to do. Links in the description. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.